pretty much. Mm -hmm. All right, our first topic for the day is the greatest horror movies of all time, in our opinion. All right, you got yours right. What are you doing? You chapsticking up here? His lips. A little uh, Bert's his lips. bees there. Little bees Do you the know birds. the story of Bert's bees? That Bert was screwed over by that old woman. I mean, she made a billion dollars off that dude. Anyway, all right, you're up. No, he's up first. Oh, whichever. Go um, for it. I'm going to my um, list. Of <clears throat> You should already be having well, that pulled up. Okay, while he's doing that, I'll go ahead and go. We're going to start with Halloween. Oh, to be a movie that is has... This six to one? I didn't rank them. I didn't rank them. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I'm gonna, I'll start with Halloween just because, you know, when we were younger and that movie was, you know, obviously known to everybody. Oh. There's, there's no blood in that movie whatsoever, and it is completely terrifying, especially to somebody that is... Younger, my 11 year old son watched it not too long ago and he didn't think it was a scary at all. It's, like, it's horrible. All right, well, I think the score is what really gets it though. Yeah, I'll give, the you, score I'll give you is that. Phenomenal. The character of Michael Myers is cool, yeah. but the movie itself is not. And I hate Jimmy Lee Curtis. Yeah. I just, I'm not yeah. a fan. But Halloween's my pick. Okay. Mine is The Exorcist for obvious reasons. Because even with Psycho doing what it did in the 60s, like Exorcist to me. It obviously changed the game, uh, you know, 1973. It reminds me when I first, the first time I saw it, because I'd, I'd heard about it forever, and I finally got around to watching it, like, later in life. And uh, when you watch 2001 A Space Odyssey, and you got the apes for 30 minutes, and you're like, what am I watching? It's kind of like when they're doing the archaeological thing, you're like, when does this, when does she start putting soup in her vagina? You know, that kind of thing, or yeah. whatever. But, man, that, that movie, I would have loved to have seen that in 1973, because I bet you that was absolutely the most intense thing in the world yeah. because it's still a great movie now yeah. and we've seen so many other like you know slasher and bloody gore or whatever and all that so that was my number one or my first my first pick is uh, original universal uh monster movie frankenstein mm. um that scene where With boris yes yeah. the scene where the little girl gets murdered mm. that's that took you by surprise uh, i think it kind of set the bar for you know the rest of the movies I don't. I don't know the exact order with Dracula, Invisible Man, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Wolfman. But I, out of those, I think Frankenstein probably. Yeah, and it's cool it. how it went from that to the '60s and '70s, and what it became, what what horror yes. is now. Like yes. it's because those movies are so. A lot of them are so cheesy, and yeah. I mean, you watch the Wolfman, you're like, what, is, what yeah. am I watching? What is this yeah. is so dumb. But anyway, yeah, all right, you're up it. again. So my fifth pick would be Twenty Eight Days Later. Ah, oh, Teeter. And I'll tell you why, hmm. because that was. The first time that I watched the zombie movie and was like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. This really could happen. Because like, you're yeah. thinking about Night of the Living Dead mm -hmm. yeah. in Georgia Minecraft. It's rage. It's, it's not Yeah, dead. and it's they're just dead. like, uh, but these yeah. fuckers were like, They bam, ran. You know? when, that, when it comes to that time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were, they were fast. Well, let me throw mine out. Uh, okay. my, I'm going to go out of order, but mine's 28 Days Later. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're, they're supposed to be coming out with a 28 years or something. I, oh, wow. I heard the other day, but I could be wrong. But okay. 28 Weeks Later is, is still it's a good movie. Good. But, yeah, I got 28 Days Later is uh, is one of mine. Um, it I, it was, uh, I watched it one night, um, and, uh, I mean, you're like, you keep looking at, like it, it was a freaky movie. And Cillian Murphy, or however you say his name, he does a really good job. And I love how you just wake up, and it's just, like, dead quiet. And he's just in, like, he's coming out of a coma. Yep. And all of England is shut down, and, like, it, it's cool. And then when they start running, and the music score is great. It's yeah, very, it's like, great. crescendo. Yeah. Like, it's cool. So, yeah, I'll throw that out. That's, that. that's good. I don't know. Uh, Friday the 13th, Part 2. Um, and that is one of those, my, Riker has asked to watch that one. I'm like, dude, I don't, I, I don't think you're ready for that one. I mean, you, you know, you have, but dad, I'm 19 picks going through people's throats while they're laying on the bed with Kevin Bacon. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the whole mystique of that movie is trying to figure out, you know, who this is and what's going That's on. That's a great twist. Yeah. yeah. And then you find out that it's the kid's mom, you know, and then she gives the backstory of Spoiler what happened. Alert. Did you see that they are coming out with a Crystal Lake show? Yeah. You know you can go to Crystal Lake and have like a weekend. I'm good. No, you can't. <coughs> like, and place. they do all these, see the show yeah. and, and all that okay. kind of crap. But, but you know what's, what's weird is I don't I've never understood. Like I was a huge Friday the 13th fan, but they're they're cheesy movies. But like the first three or four are good. But like what what is he? And like he, he drowned as a boy and now he comes out of the lake. Is he? I mean, nobody really... Defines, you can't kill him! I, but I don't... You can. You can. He dies, and then they bring him back to life with lightning in, like, number four or five. So he can be killed. He yeah. was buried. They dug him up. Yeah. So, like, what the whole the whole series, if you watch him in order, you're like, I don't understand. Is this dude, like, an alien? Like, what? what is... He's... Because he dies as a boy. What made him supernatural? It makes no sense. And maybe... 
Maybe somebody knows more about the, the series. And I've only watched. I think Jason Takes Manhattan is where I was like, all right, I'm done. Done. No more. I can't do any more Fred of this. Jason's good. Was it? But you have Who to think won? about it. I mean, this. this uh, Jason. Jason did. And then he saw Fred. Freddy's hand come out. Oh, yeah, so Who won the Alien Predator? Uh, Aliens. Uh, did he? Of course. Okay. But if, if you look at like that whole grand scheme, I mean, the guy that, you know, we've spent an entire day going to find. I mean, he was he was supposed to be the guy that was taking over for Jason Tommy. You know, Corey Feldman <coughs> in four. Um, but he is supernatural. The kid the kid drowned. He it's lived underwater. Time. He lived underwater for all these I years. Just, I just you don't, know? I don't understand the story. Because I, I look back at it. I mean, they were great when I was a kid, but I look back at it as an adult, I'm like, is he under a lake for 40 years? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, I don't get it. But they're coming out with the prequel show, and the funny thing is, the girl that played... A TV show, like yeah, Netflix. Yeah, it's, it's on Peacock, but it's Whatever it's a prequel is. called Crystal Lake. Okay, and the girl Alice is that her name? Adrian King, the girl who got pulled out of the boat at the very end by okay. Jason. All right, all right, she's one of the main characters in the show. Okay, <laughs> it's mm. kind of yeah, kind of mm. All right, you're up again. I think it is. Uh, I actually saw this movie in the theater in 1981. My dad was a single dad who wanted to go see movies, and this film actually won anyone. the very first. Academy Award for Best Makeup. Is An American Werewolf in London. 1981. Man. I tell you right, that's some, that's some torture shit. It's so, a great movie. So when I would go to the movies God, with my dad and watch crazy. these, I went to The Howling, I went to see yeah, American, yeah. American Werewolf mm -hmm. in London. And he, I, I always picked up on the music, and when the music kind of got creepy, you remember back in the old day, they had the box, mm -hmm. where the reel was actually shining through right. the window. Now it's all DVD based. But anytime that would happen, DVD. I would... I would go and just look up here. Movie's going on the screen. I'm tucked in on my dad. He's stoned out of his mind, having a great time. And I'd be here going, I don't know what the shit's going Welcome on right now. You know? But watching like how all that transpired, <coughs> just walking on a trail out in the middle of London. And Griffin, Griffin Dunn should have been Dunn. in more movies. He, he, should, he, he really is a good movie. What was the last movie he was in? Who's that girl? Like I love, After Hours is one of my favorite really? movies. And that was really good. Yeah, but it, it was it's such a good movie. I watched it not too long ago. Then they tried to come out with American say. Werewolf in Paris, and it's just mm -hmm. not good. Yeah, right. It's just not. All right, so I'm going to give you mine. I'm going to go out of order again. Uh, it's um, American Werewolf in London. <laughs> um, you know, John Landis, uh, you know, it, it, obviously you watch three. Thriller, um, you know, he, he they, Michael Jackson loved that movie so much that they based the whole Thriller video on, yes. on that stuff. But watching the special effects in 1981 for how they did, I mean, if you just take a, the, the transformation scene, mm -hmm. um, it's crazy that they even did that with no CGI or no anything like that. But you know, not not stay off the moors. It's just such a creepy movie, and it just it just goes off in some cool places. And it's a great great horror movie. Great Do you remember movie. the song that ended the movie? I don't. And I watched it like a year ago. So. Bob Seger. Blue Moon. Mm. Mm. Giddy up. Yep. All right, it's your turn. Night of the Living Dead, the original. It's a good movie. I think it's set to They're Barbara. Coming to get you, Barbara. Yeah, brains. And brains. Set, to, set to Barbara Zombie. Movie. And think about how cheap it would have been to make that movie. You need, a, you need a car, a cemetery, and an old farmhouse. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And you're I mean, right. really. Like, and and four a cemetery. different people. Yeah, right. Are there, what were there in the end? There's more than four. What was it, like six or seven? There's a few. Yeah. The yeah, first still, person buys a ticket, you're playing with house money. Because yeah. <laughs> it's already paid for. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. It's, it's already paid for. Yeah, it, that, that is a great movie, though. If you've it's never seen it, it's so good. And it's another one of those ones. Look how far we've come. But look at what how crazy that must have been. What was it, 67? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Like, that must have just blown everybody's mind, you know? That would have been, like, the first time listening to, to Hendrix or something. You're like, what is this? What you know, is this is just on? crazy. Yeah. Around the same time, too. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, is that one or two for you? You got to go again. I got to go again. Okay. Um, my next one's uh, is a newer movie. It's a, a Quiet Place. I've it's, heard it's, of it. I've never seen it. Gets, it's, it's a fantastic it's, it's, horror movie, and it's the dialogue the script was probably four pages because it, they don't talk. the 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 premise of the movie is there's these monsters that work off a of sound. They'll come kill you if they hear. Okay. You. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've heard so of it. So it's a great film. Yeah. It's a, it really is. It's like how new? Uh, five, ten years. Okay. Six, seven years? Six, seven years. There, and there's a part two that's really good, too. The second one was actually yeah. pretty good, too. But the first one, it just said a whole different, mm -hmm. like, like a whole different horror movie vibe. Because you're just watching this movie with nothing going on. Right. It's just quiet. Right. And it's creepy as crap. And it's, Hence the name. Yeah. It's John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, but one of the cool, Oh, yeah, yeah. One yeah, of the cooler yeah, parts at the beginning man. of that movie is because they can't talk to each other. Yeah. He's listening, or he, either he's listening to her or she's listening to a Harvest Moon, and they share the headphones just so they can you know, kind of remind each other, hey, a great song. we're in this together. Yeah, great song. 
Uh, yeah. Mine would be the 1974 Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. I can't <coughs> watch uh, Dennis Hopper and all the other crap. I've not seen the remakes, anything like that. No. I love the original. I love how just the music that is like scream, oh, yeah. whatever that soundtrack crap is. But the, the character, I think the only person left alive now is the hitchhiker and like one other person because Marilyn... Franklin, uh, all his, you know, Leatherface, uh, Gunnar Hansen, the original one, they're all dead. I mean, it's, Gunnar it's Hansen's dead. Yeah, yeah, he died a few years ago. But Toby Hooper made a great movie, and if you know anything about how it was made, they all were miserable because they're in Texas, and it was like 108 degrees that week, and they filmed it for like $3,200, and it made like $80 million. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. But that thing has influenced so many great films, and it's just so creepy. I mean, there's like four, four people that die, maybe, and all, and... I'm going to Granger, Texas on my road trip this summer. I'll be eating there uh, at the house that they've moved into a restaurant uh, okay. called Hooper's, named after the director. And I'll also be eating at the uh, the roadside gas station that's turned into a barbecue place too as well. Nice. So we'll be doing Isn't some... that rough, like, loosely based on Ed Gein? Uh, yes, yes. As, as were a lot of things with Psycho and Silence of the Lambs and all that, but yeah. But it's just a great... Leatherface, although like uh, uh, you know mentally deficient, he changes throughout the series as to what he really is, like... You know, but in that one, he's just like a driven child. He's not really driven to kill. He's told what to do by the other family members. Yeah. So it's kind of a unique yeah. killing situation. But uh, he's just such a, a menacing character. You know, this six foot five guy yeah. with a dead skin mask. So dead skin, go mask. for it. I, you know, I wanted to do what you did and just kind of mirror off of, but I, I like to get my answers out first just in case anybody's got them. <laughs> Peter may have this one. You, you won't just because I know the way your brain thinks. Scream. Um, when the movie came it's a good out, movie. It, was a good it, movie. it honestly changed the rules of the horror genre. And that was the thing that was so complicated about it, but also so intriguing is the fact that the whole movie you spent getting clues right. that it could be this person, it could be this person, and you're looking for one person and it ends up being two people that are basically accomplices with each other that have a backstory to the, the heroine in the movie, mm -hmm. and it changed all the rules. So you're because picking it because it was, like, avant-garde? Like, yes. It, okay. it, not because was, it's, like, the best horror movie or no, I mean, but just because you, it was so influential. Yeah, if you look at it, I mean, it's not like the, you know, the actresses and actors are winning Academy Awards sure. or anything like that, but the storyline and the way that it was directed mm -hmm. and the whole plot of everything was just brilliant. All right. What's your next one? Uh, my next one is, I'm going to say The Exorcist. I'm going to save my last one. Um, I, I don't think anything else needs to be said after what you said. I mean, you're talking about a 13-year-old girl who's possessed by the... You've seen it, right? By a demon. Okay. And, well, know, a lot, some people haven't seen it. It's just, you it's want, the grandfather. The, the the head spinning and pea soup flying everywhere. I mean, it's... And just, if you look at how some of, like, she got hurt doing some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. the, the special effects in that were crazy as well. There was some, I mean, that was a year before, um, or no, what were we talking about? Uh, it was 10 years before. Eight years, yeah. Right, yeah, whatever the math is. But uh, there was some crazy stuff they did. And if you look at how they filmed some of that stuff with their head spinning around on it, yeah. and, and it looks pretty convincing it does. for 1973 for 50 sure. 50 years ago. Yeah, you know, yeah. 50 years, that's wow. crazy. Yeah. All right, my next one is uh, House of Thousand Corpses. Um, I love Sherry Moon Zombie. I love there. Bill Mosley. I, like he, I love the fact that Zombie goes back and gets all these people that were in older movies and brings them back and you know yeah. reinvents their career. But when I watched that first movie, to me, it's a total throwback to so many things. Uh, the Hills Have Eyes, which I saw the original, mostly because I was a Motley Crue fan as a kid, and that that bald headed weird guy with the ears was in The Hills Have Eyes, and I yeah. so I rented it based on that. You know, um, and that's a that's a creepy, weird movie. I've never seen the remake, but Texas Chainsaw, like he he pulls from all these influences, and it's just it just gets darker and darker as they go into the hole for looking for Doctor Satan. It just gets weirder and weirder. Yeah. Captain Spaulding's a great character. I mean, it's just cool. Yeah. Rain Rain Wilson's in that. Yes. Like you forget that Dwight. part, but but I just think it, it was a great uh, Dwight Street. Yeah, that same guy was in Weird Science. Who? Oh yeah, yeah, it was one of the bikers. Yeah, and then the yeah. the other biker, the main guy. Do you yeah. remember him? Uh, from something, yes. Commando. Right. Yes, 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 yes. To the top. Of yeah. <laughs> was that Commando or Predator? Predator. That was That was Commando. Predator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was Predator, Predator. He was yeah. Bennett in Commando. Yep. That's yep. right. That's right. Yep. Which was the, like the worst bad guy. Like, he was awful. That dude was wearing chain mail. Whip his ass. You know what? He's not a douchebag. Chain mail. <laughs> That's heavy. What the hell are you doing? How you going to fight in chain mail? Yeah. He ain't got swords going. Then he going. take a, like a 30-foot <laughs> pole and throw it all the way perfectly <laughs> cylindrical straight at him. It never moved him right in his chest. Come on, Arnold. That's a little too much. All right. 
My last two, I think, I means Texas Chainsaw Massacre, oh, cool. the original, and, ha and Halloween. I think Halloween's the greatest horror movie. Uh, ever. I don't get See, you people. I don't understand. I've watched it. I don't get it. It's because it's, it's mildly creepy in a couple places. No, it's, it's the best horror movie ever made. It's no. it's, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, it's it really is. Hilarious. It's because it's there's nothing that's horror movie fast paced. Mm -hmm. Everything is slow and methodical. And the score behind it. And you see this guy who's six feet tall wearing a damn William Shatner mask and coveralls. That part is weird. Why do we not know that as kids? Like, I just learned that in the last ten years. That was a William Shatner mask? Yeah, like, nobody knew that back in the day. But when you look at it, you're like, how do we not know it? I mean, look, it's William Shatner. You know but I mean? did, you see, did you see how that happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're yeah. like, there's a... Right, but I'm saying, like, just it's just it strange that and we didn't just find that out till like, yeah. we were in our 40s or wow. something. But. yeah. All right, my last one is the thing. Um, John Carpenter. Uh, anything Wilford with Brimley. anything with Wilford Brimley in it, I got to pick. Yeah, nineteen eighty two. It's just it's a great movie. Um, and I I just recently saw it in the last couple of years because I've been hearing about it forever. Kurt Russell. I mean, it's just, it's just I, I like that kind of. It's like Alien in Antarctica kind of yeah. thing. I mean, yeah. it's it's just a really good movie. Um, and it's got some cool special effects stuff for the time. True. I just think it's a good movie. Was Wilford Brimley when that movie came out? Older or younger than 48? I would say, just because you're asking this, he was younger. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cocoon hadn't come out yet. He was only... He was only 50. Ipso facto. He was 50 in Cocoon. In Cocoon, he was 50. He looked a lot Let's older. Say, yeah. Don Amici and Jessica Tandy in Cocoon were probably 104. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Honestly. I mean... That's right. a good pick. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a Muhammad And it's a ninja... Course. What? Cocoon? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I seriously thought he was talking about Cocoon. Because what would you do, Cedar? If you got, if you could stay for and live forever in space, or you stay and live with your grandkids for another four years, what, are you going into space? Remember? And live forever in space? Yeah, well, remember they, they, they. Why would you want to live forever? I don't know, but that's what they decided. Because I'm pretty sure at Cocoon they all left, right? Well, they, they choose like to live forever without no health aging. problem. Yeah, she right. was, well, she oh, was yeah, just, I'm in. She was floating in the pool. Yeah, let's not forget about that part. But why wouldn't the grandkids get to go up there too? You can never come back. That was nah, the whole thing. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, screw See, it, grandkids. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, go for it. Later. Me love you. Here's some pictures. I think you get bored though. Are you got these? these. Would you have the the same illnesses that like? Old people have no. That's what I'm saying. If that's not illnesses, but like maladies. You know what I mean? No, no, like you got to take a bunch no, of fiber for the no, remainder no, 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 of eternity. No, no. That could be of... perfect. Okay. All right. Go. go. Are I mean, done? You can't even really? catch, can't catch a cold. He's... Okay. Go ahead. Y'all done? Yeah. I don't think they have colds in space. The atmosphere. Go yes. ahead. You're, You're on time. Go for it. I'm ashamed of you guys. The yes. Shining. What? That's not a horror movie. Like Die Hard ain't a Christmas movie. The shot. What's horror about? It's a guy that goes off the deep end drinking and goes to kill his family. How's it a horror movie? How is it not? There's no. That's he just, kills his family. It's a thriller. He that's kills, not a horror he movie. He kills Scatman Crothers, lives him out in the Scat snow. Scatman Crothers should have died. He should have. He should have. Just for having the name Scatman. Yeah, it's the right? shot. Yeah, that is that's right. not a horror it's movie. Or I would have picked it because that's one of my favorite movies of all mm -hmm. time. Got, I got a tattoo of it right there. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, see? But see, look. That's. Uh, what, do you think it's a horror movie? Yeah. Then why you all it? work and no play? Because I mean, it's okay. But, it's I mean, okay. I mean, it's, it's. I think it's Stanley Kubrick's uh, admission. You better see masterpiece. It's his admission of shooting the uh, moon landing. The moon landing. Yeah. Well, there's. I mean, and the, if you the, haven't the seen the problem with The Shining is, I've read the book. Yeah, and the books. The book goes into some weird the stuff. The book's too. a lot better than the film. Oh God. Most books are. You and Stephen but, King can eat a bag of dicks. What Kubrick did with that? Kubrick made a great film. It's a good horror movie. Uh, yeah. But it's not what Stephen King wrote. But that's true about a lot of movies. Yeah, that, that's I mean, what, that's I mean, what the artistic like way off. That's all about your no, adaptation. It's not that you, you're going to interpret yeah. what you read, it's and then you're going to say, okay, this is what I want to see. What, what did he talk about? Uh, I might be confusing it with Misery. where he. Wrote, I do think it's a, I think it's a, yes, I think it's a horror movie. I think it's a no. horror movie. I, just, I can't get behind that being a horror movie. It's a phenomenal movie. And if you've never seen... The documentary that goes with it about all the theories of what all the things mean. Room two, uh, if you two, what two thirty seven? Two thirty seven. If you if you don't like the movie, go watch that documentary and then go back and watch it, and yeah. you'll appreciate the movie completely different. Because Kubrick did some stuff. He didn't do stuff on accident. Like you're, the moon landing, all that crap's great. Yeah. All right, whose turn is it? That's it. That's, That's it. Oh, all right. So there's the top six uh, horror films. Uh, yeah, so we'll move on to comedy. We'll change it up here a little bit. Moving on to Dickie and Sue.